Shooters, Reloaders, and Conversationalists, welcome to Ponder Lab. This is uh, part two of our video on the internal concentricity comparator, commonly referred to as the Vern Zucchi machine. In uh, part one, we introduced the device, the inventor Vern Zucchi. We explained the basic theory of operation and discussed techniques and limitations. In this video, we jump right into a walkthrough of the ICC and demonstrate testing various bullets. But uh, first things first. What's up with the gloves? The test coil is very small and the induction fields are sensitive to any sort of contamination. Skin oils or oil, dirt, lubricant, or oxidation on the bullets can interfere with the single signal and reduce the quality of measurement. So this is clearly a case of cleanliness is next to godliness if you want good data. The ICC is all analog circuit circuitry, so it's important to have it turned on for a certain amount of time, say 30 minutes, to let the circuit stabilize. It's also important that your samples be at room temperature as well, because temperature affects the bullet jackets and thus the measurements. Let's do a device walkthrough. On the side we have power in, on off switch, and motor speed control. On the front, we have three switches, coarse, medium, and fine. This one's just a toggle, which is over a range, and then medium and fine control. You'll see it has witness marks that run from about 7 o'clock to 5 o'clock, and this will help center up your various uh, bullet tests. Testing the bullet on the uh, Vern Juki is very straightforward. Place the bullet on the balls sitting right here, and then what we're going to do, adjust this stop. It's important not to uh, tighten down this, this um, cap screw. It's, it, it's kept loose, so you can easily move that. So you want to just get it centered up and bring down the clamp. The, the, the uh, meter will probably fling one way or the other. The main thing is to set the course. We know that this one's on zero. Now all we need to do is move the medium, and you can see it's pretty sensitive. So we just want to get it in the middle someplace, and then turn back the fine to center it up. Where it's at on the meter isn't particularly important. As soon as we turn on the motor, uh, we might be on a low spot or a high spot. There could be a little bit of burnishing going on in the ball bearing, so it's probably going to be So let's turn this guy on and make a measurement. See the bullet rotating here, and you see the deviations are really less than one. We would call this basically nil. So we can let this run, but you're going to get that inf indication pretty early on, and the testing uh, testing is complete. Just simply turn off the motor, pull out the bullet, and you're done. This particular one is a six and a half millimeter bow tail hollow point. And uh, like I say, we measure it in deviation units, just DU for short, and it's nil, which means this is a very good bullet. Our next bullet is a 7 millimeter bolt tail hollow point. As we mentioned about uh, cleanliness, make sure this, uh, the bullet's clean, oil, lubricants off. Set in the bearings. This is already adjusted back a little bit to allow for the longer bullet. Bring down the rotation there. We already know the range is zero, so we just smaller changes in the uh, medium. Gets us in the middle. We just fine tune with the uh, fine knob, and we're ready to test. You see the bullet rotating and we're dealing with roughly about two and a half deviation units. Uh, experience guides us that this is still a very good bullet you would want to use in your matches versus something you just use for practice. That's all it takes to test it. Motor off, rotation arm up, we're good to go. Our next bullet is a six millimeter boat tail hollow point. The 
the stop has already been adjusted and we'll see the deflection is all the way to the left. So when we adjust the medium range, we don't see any movement. Not a problem. Center back up both fine and medium and shed course up to the 50 range and now dial back the medium to get on the page. Get the dial in here and then you can bring up the fine to get in the middle and we're ready to test. And we see about two, two and a half DU. This is a good bullet. Which course range you're on really doesn't matter. It could be the thickness of the jacket, the particular alloy they're using. It doesn't really matter. It just start at zero, and if you need to switch it to 50, um, it's no problem. Just recenter up the uh, dials, and you're good to go. Our next bullet is a 308 full metal jacket flat base. You'll notice this has a cantilever on it. We've already adjusted the stop, and if you note know carefully, the cantilever is overlapping into the sensor. We're still on the 50 range, so we can bring the dial up in the middle like we've done before to get things centered up and then we can test. You see the deflection units are total wackadoo so what's happening is we're picking up all the inconsistencies and variations on the cantilevers so like we mentioned in part one uh, if you're running cantilevers and they're in that sensor, you're going to have very poor measurement. We recommend you don't do it. Our last bullet is another 308. This is a full metal jacket with a boat tail. We've already set back the stop, load up the bullet. And you'll see that now as we adjust the medium, we don't get any deflections. So we center back up and we go back down to range zero. And now we can get our deflections in the middle of the uh, meter. Adjust the medium, the fine, and you're ready to go. There's an important thing here we want to draw your attention to. You'll see the deflection is running generally about, about six units with the motor at full speed. Well, if you slow this down, you start to pick up even more deflection. Now you're more like about eight. What's going on here? In physical systems, uh, mechanical systems, as well as electronic systems, there's a amount of time needed to respond to a change. So as this is de detecting the change here, going through the, uh, the going through the circuitry and putting the change up here, there's inertia. So it takes time to respond to that. Uh, we call this uh, a time constant, the measurement, and the Greek letter tau. We don't have to be concerned with all the details because all we have to do is adjust the speed to give us our maximum deflection. So on this bullet here, as we're going slower, we're seeing we're like uh, eight, uh, almost 10 units of deflection. So what's important isn't, isn't, what isn't important is the speed. What is important is to watch and get the, uh, the speed adjustment to get the maximum, uh, maximum deflection is really what the uh, important measurement is. This would not be a very good bullet for using in a match. Set it aside for practice or zeroing and such.
Okay, now for the bonus round. Testing cartridge cases. Cartridge brass is copper and zinc, and it makes nice eddy currents. So just like the jacket of a, of a bullet, this is, uh, can be tested as well. You'll notice that there's three sets of ball bearings here. The longest ones are for putting cases. This particular case, it's a 6GT. All of our setups are the same things you do um, for the uh, for bullets. Setting coarse range, medium, fine. And we're ready to test. We're seeing about three and a half units of deflection. Slow it down to check. We're still about three and a half units of deflection, so we're good to go. We don't really fully research this out much. We're thinking uh, cartridge cases, you know, it's kind of a combustion changer problem versus bullets, which are hot and spin at a quarter of a million RPM. So we'll leave it to the users to determine how valuable this is for cartridge cases. A couple of things in conclusion. Notice the innovation here, the design of this uh, mechanism. It's very reminiscent of tone arms on uh, turntables. So it allows for small tolerances through here to give good compliance, good contact and compliance to rotate the, rotate the bullet or the brass very, very smoothly. Okay, there you have it, the Verunjuki machine. Clearly an amazing device. Thanks for watching. Be safe. See you soon.